After one year of cancellation and another where it might as well have been cancelled, CES returned with a vengeance for 2023. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV, and I've just got back from Las Vegas where, across a maze of convention centers, hotel suites, and pop-up stands, I spent the past week playing with shiny new toys that'll be launching in the next few months. CES is arguably the biggest tech show of the year, and it's impossible to cover absolutely everything. So instead, six days and about 11,000 miles later, here's a selection of my favorite stuff from the show, the products that impressed me the most and that I want to spend more time with in 2023. Take a sec to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll jump in. As usual, Lenovo brought a ton of new devices to CES, but the one that caught my eye was this dual-screen laptop, the excellent YogaBook 9i. The concept is simple. What if, instead of a keyboard, down here you had a second touchscreen? The YogaBook 9i has two of these gorgeous 2.8K 13.3-inch displays, which you can arrange however you like. It has a 360-degree hinge, so you can use it as a smaller tablet or fully opened out. Paired with this handy folding stand, it's easy to arrange in either orientation for a larger combined screen space, and being a Lenovo device, there is naturally also optional pen input. When it's opened out, a five-finger gesture lets you open content across the entire display, and if you need a keyboard and trackpad, an eight-finger swipe can conjure up this software keyboard, which isn't quite the same as a proper physical keyboard, but works surprisingly well for me. Of course, if you do need a real keyboard, then Lenovo's got you covered with this Bluetooth model, you can either use it at a distance or snap it to the bottom of the display. And while it's there, you'll still be able to use the top portion of that lower screen with these specially designed widgets. So this is a laptop with a lot going on, and it manages to do all this while weighing only 1.38 kilos, just slightly less than a 13-inch MacBook Pro. At the other end of the computing spectrum, you've got Asus's first 3D laptop, which is also the first to do 3D on an OLED display. The Asus ProArt StudioBook 3D is a very long name for a very impressive piece of kit. It's powered by the latest 13th gen Intel Core i9 and GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs, and that horsepower is put to good use running the stunning 3.2K 3D OLED display with a slick 120Hz refresh rate. Being a glasses-free 3D display, you lose some of that resolution in 3D mode, but the image quality is still phenomenal thanks to the fact that it's built around a really great OLED panel. The quality of the depth effect also really impressed me. It feels a lot more like a cinematic 3D experience than any small screen glasses reset up I've used in the past. The content really seems like you could reach out and touch it. Part of that is due to the unique camera array up top here. These are used for eye tracking, so that in interactive 3D content like games, it can adjust the perspective of what you're seeing to take into account the angle of your eyes. Basically, not only do you get a 3D image, but that 3D image seems more lifelike as you move around. Asus had a bunch of really cool demos to showcase this whole setup, with everything from standard 3D photos and videos to 3D models, and even an interactive medical demo using this pen accessory. Very impressive, and I can't wait to see how Asus refines this idea in the next generation. When I was flying back from Vegas, I was more than a little disappointed that I didn't have any of TCL's new smart glasses to help keep me entertained on the plane. First up, the Nextwear S were confirmed for a US launch at $399, bringing the equivalent of a 130-inch Full HD TV to life right in front of your eyes, with support for both 2D and 3D content. They plug in over USB-C and draw power from whatever they're connected to, so there's no extra battery to worry about. And from there, you can use them as an extra screen for your phone, Nintendo Switch, Steam Deck, or whatever else you own that can do video over USB-C. The TCL Rainio X2 takes smart eyewear beyond just mirroring whatever you plug it into. These augmented reality specs are powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 processor with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. They look like a semi-normal pair of glasses, but in fact boast full-color micro-LED displays in each lens, capable of up to 1000 nits of brightness, as well as a 16 megapixel camera with 1080p video support. The full range of sensors you'd expect from a smartphone are aboard as well, including gyro, accelerometer, and compass. So in terms of functionality, you're looking at digital assistant stuff, navigation, and of course, content capture. TCL's sending these out to developers in the early part of the year, so we'll probably learn more about what it can actually do as the devs get to grips with it. Still early days then, but a very impressive and promising product all the same. I wasn't expecting to go to CES and end up picking an Android tablet as one of my favorite gadgets from the show, but the Leia Tablet 12.4 is legitimately impressive. Leia is a relatively unknown name, but they partnered with ZTE for this new 3D focus slate, and their tech will be shipping in some ZTE tablets later in 2023 in addition to Leia branded tablets coming to the US. The Leia Tablet's 3D effect is fantastic, not quite Asus Pro Art level, after all that's a much more expensive product, but impressive to behold whether you're gaming or viewing 3D photos or movies. What's even more impressive is Leia's ability to upscale 2D content to 3D directly on the device. 
This works for movies or photos, and while you can kind of tell when a photo is upscaled because of the softer edges in some cases, I was really impressed with how well it worked in video. The Layer Viewer app lets you browse YouTube and then bring that 2D content to life in 3D. Gaming also works great in 3D mode thanks to support for 3D APIs in Unity and the Unreal Engine, and Layer's even planning on enabling 3D video calls at some point in future thanks to the 3D front and rear cameras. Overall, I was really surprised with how much I liked this little tablet. LG's latest TV is one of those cool ideas that you see and wonder why no one's done it before. The 97-inch M3 wireless TV is exactly what it sounds like. You won't find a nest of cables lurking behind this thing, and the only why you'll see is the power cable, which LG's been able to hide inside the stand. You'll barely notice it at all. So yeah, you've just got this stunning 97-inch OLED panel with nothing to distract you from the view. But of course, you still need to connect stuff to your TV, right? That's where this transmitter box comes in. It can be seated within 30 feet of the TV, though it does need to be within line of sight, which might limit where you can place it. In any case, this is where your ports all live if you're plugged into a sound system or console or TV. And from there, the box beams the picture back to the TV at up to 4K 120Hz. Likely over super high frequencies, though LG isn't saying exactly how this works. This TV looks fantastic, but based on the pricing of previous M-series sets, it could cost as much as $25,000 when it goes on sale later this year. Chances are your webcam sucks. I have a MacBook Pro with one of those annoying camera notches and even that isn't great. Razer's solution for better streams and zoom calls is the latest product in its Keo line, the Keo Pro Ultra. As you can see, it's effectively a gigantic lens that clips the top of your monitor or laptop. It has the largest sensor in any webcam, measuring it at a massive 1 over 1.2 inches, and unlike earlier Keo cameras, supports up to 4K resolution at 24 frames per second. The huge sensor combined with an f over 1.7 aperture means it should be capable of capturing excellent 4K video even in rooms with less than ideal lighting, with a little bit of natural bokeh thrown in. That's something you don't normally get out of a standard webcam outside of fake, janky-looking software blurring. Razer demoed the new Keo in this Las Vegas hotel suite with pretty lousy lighting, and I was impressed to see how usable the footage from it still was. Besides the optics, the Keo features face tracking autofocus to avoid the spikes of focus hunting that you might see from a dedicated camera drafted into webcam duty, and the same HDR features you might know from the Keo and Keo Pro have made it across the new device as well, not too shabby for just $299. Meanwhile, at CES, Razer launched the new Blade 18 and Blade 16. The 18 is a beast of a laptop, packing an 18 inch Quad HD Plus display and powered by the top tier Core i9 and GeForce RTX 40 series chips from Intel and Nvidia. A maxed out blade can be configured with 64 gigs of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage, and that's user upgradable too with a spare slot for an extra NVMe card. The Blade 16 packs the same immense computing power into a smaller space, equivalent to just a 15 inch notebook, and it's available with two display modes, Full HD at 240Hz for when every frame counts, or 4K Plus at 120. Personally, I go for 120, but you know, when you've got this much gaming horsepower at your disposal then, I don't know, maybe you just need to YOLO it and go for that stupidly high frame rate. I've left this one to last because it's pretty wild, and actually not something you'll be able to buy anytime soon. TCL didn't make too much fuss about its optical field 3D TV, but this concept device, more than anything else, might most represent the future of TVs and displays in general. This is a glasses-free 3D TV with a difference. Unlike most 3D TVs which show you a fixed perspective of the stereoscopic image on screen, an optical field display shows you a subtly different image as you rotate your head around it. In effect, it's as close to a TV being a true portal into another world as you're likely to get. And because of the way it works, it has an advantage over eye-tracking 3D setups like Asus's ProArt in that it can be viewed by multiple people at once. Obviously, this kind of TV would require special content to work best with it. Gaming is one strong possibility for this sort of tech, but for regular video, I don't even want to think about how complicated it'd be to frame and shoot something where the audience could change their perspective at any time. You'd need a bunch of lenses and some very special software magic to make this work. So this tech is pretty limited right now. TCL's demo worked best at a distance of around a couple meters from the display, and the content being shown was exactly what you see here, just a 3D model of a woman's face. But I'd love to fast forward to optical field TVs in five or 10 years time and see where we are. This seems like a really promising technology. That's it for now. Let us know which of these gadgets you'd most like to spend more time with in 2023, and be sure to subscribe to XDA TV as we enter the big phone launch season in February and beyond. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.